button. I push the record button, I hope. It says it's recording. Everything's recording. We're in southeast Oklahoma with our guide, Derek Edwards. This is his camp. He hunts, runs cat dogs out of here. And got Cody King from southern, about Ed, as far Ed, as you can go in south Texas. Edinburgh, Texas, about as far as you can go. Okay, so I'm a long ways from home. We heard a lot of, not a lot, but we heard some things. We, people were curious whether South Texas cat dogs could come to go to different places and catch cats. And uh, years ago, we were talking about this the other day, about seven or eight years ago, uh, Cody, he, it was kind of a... Uh, it was really kind of a misunderstanding, is what it was. Yeah, it was the come on, Taco, get out of here. It was the the communications over the internet through bulletin boards or Facebook or something like that. That it was YouTube, and it get and uh, some things get <clears throat> get misunderstood. It's taken out of con. You know what might sound insulting really wasn't insulting. It wasn't meant to be insulting. So, uh, I was. Sitting at home, and I didn't have a YouTube account or anything like that. And I was on my wife's phone watching some YouTube videos, and there was a video that uh, someone did of Harold Parker, who is a, from my understanding, a great cat hunter from Mississippi. And, Anyways, during that interview, you know, it was a multi-hour long interview, and it was all great. And then for a few seconds, he made a comment that, and, and what he said was, he said, South Texas dogs can catch cats in Mississippi. I know he said, Mississippi dogs can catch cats in South Texas, but South Texas dogs can't catch cats in Mississippi. And he... he he didn't do it on purpose, you know. He just said that, and 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 I mean, he was really just relaying what he had his, seen, his own perspective yes. from what he had witnessed himself. Yeah, and he, who knew where those dogs came from or anything? Yeah, like that. they. Uh, um, and I'm 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 pretty vulgar sometimes, you know. I gotta I gotta watch myself, and uh, you know, your friends will tell you I. I can be a little rough around the edges, and I didn't mean anything bad by it, but I did make a comment that, uh, you know, I said, oh, I think what I, word for word, I said, I said these guys are full of shit, and I, I probably shouldn't have worded it that way, but I've, I've said the same thing to you joking around, and but sometimes you go to typing that stuff, you know, and, and, and the way you're thinking it in your mind it doesn't get read that way when you're reading it versus hearing it. And yeah, exactly. Uh, anyways, it caused a, a a pretty big scuffle and on big game houndsmen, you know me. And it, it wasn't so much with Harold Parker, uh, but it was with that guy that wrote that book, that David Pitagor. Or I, yeah, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't, I don't know, know how to pronounce his last name. But it and uh, and what it did though, what was <coughs> pretty neat is it kind of. It kind of motivated Cody to see if he could take his dogs in different places and catch bobcats. And to be very clear, Harold Parker's not the only person that's ever said that. Oh, no, you know, no, and yeah. and uh, a lot of people have said it. And you know, I, you shouldn't say, you shouldn't categorize you know whole areas like that because I mean. You don't know what you don't know. Yep. And, you know, I can't say that. I've never seen a Mississippi dog run, you yep. know. So, you know, you can't say much. But I had said on there in the comments, you know, I said, y'all come down to Mississippi. I mean, y'all come down to South Texas and hunt. And then I'll come to Mississippi and hunt. And we'll film it and put it on YouTube, you know. And, and uh, when it first started out, I think Mr. Parker was uh, – you know, there were some comments were made. Oh, we'll do it. I think you even made a comment. I'll film it. You know, I'll come down. And, 
everybody, you in know, a, in a friendly way. Yeah, yeah. in a very friendly oh, yeah. way. Just, uh, honestly, man, just like this, I want to see. Yeah, and and then I want to keep all the parties involved, honest. Yeah, and and you know, do it. And not that you're not honest. You can make a fool out of me too. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're really upset about it, and and uh, but I, I I don't I don't think he was. You know, me and me and David kind of went to we got off topic a little bit you know and and things went sideways pretty quick but you know when it when it happened there was a lot of people that said man i i want to i'll come watch you know it was it was it was kind of a cool deal and it and it it would have been really neat if it could have turned out yeah you know uh in a in a friendlier way but and, and also need to say that that david I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Pigatow, Pugtow. Anyway, he he wrote a book called The Ultimate Bobcat Hound or Ultimate Bobcat or Bobcat no, Dog. Bobcat yeah. Dog, which is pretty popular. And I don't even know <coughs> if you can get the book anymore. I I think last time I read anything he posted, he just said he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna have any more. He used to have on YouTube him reading a book. Yeah, it was good. I and I I enjoyed the book. I mean, it, and that's how I found the video. Yeah, you know of of and, and to be fair. Going back in time, and so I was on my wife's account, and, and and it was my wife with her maiden names account. So nobody nobody knew it was me, you See, know. You... <laughs> so everybody, and that was the other thing. So, uh, and I think someone had said said something to Derek before I knew Derek, you know. And hey, who's this Melissa Metter, you know? And, and nobody knew who it was. Well, that's why I'm kind of glad all the drama happened, because that's the first time I ever heard of Cody. Yeah. I called a friend of mine in South Texas. I said, who's this? He said, I don't know, because it was in Cody's wife's yeah. name. Yeah. yeah. You go to the power of the internet. And then, so when when everything blew up, it was like a year later or eight months later. So when his friend called me and said, hey, this is Melissa, I, yeah. I mean, I didn't remember a comment I made on a YouTube video eight months ago, you know, but it took that long for someone to see the comment, and and I, I wish I wouldn't have, you know, I wish I'd have worded it a little different, but I didn't mean any bad by it, and, and to be perfectly clear, I have the utmost respect for, for Mr. Harold Parker, and he's a... He's I a, think he's a fine man. I think he's a great hunter, too, yeah. you know, I, I can tell you one thing, anybody who hunts in this country... And and to be perfectly clear, we're also not in Mississippi. No, yeah. So, gonna, <laughs> so the first thing they're going to say is, well, yeah, you caught some in South Leaks, Oklahoma, but you didn't do it in Mississippi. This is the closest we could get. And then, you, you know, you go to Mississippi, then the Arkansas guy is going to say, well, you didn't, you caught them in Mississippi, but you didn't catch them in Arkansas. The Oklahoma guys are going to say, well, you caught them over there on that side yeah, of Oklahoma. We done, we done had here. some of that on uh, <laughs> on my Facebook. You know, you're over there where it's easy. and and uh, yeah, But... It, as long as everybody remembers that it's all in good fun, yeah, you know, and and it's all for education too, yeah. because it's very easy for me to sit in South Texas and criticize someone's dogs or say something, because you don't know what you don't know. But anybody like Mister Parker, or you know Finney Clay and the guys that uh, Hootie Shaw and, and to be honest with you, it's a bunch of guys that I don't know because it's yeah. just. There, it's it's regional, but how far is it for you to travel up here? Eleven hours. Yeah, you know, uh, but anybody that consistently catches bobcats in this country or or country similar to this has good dogs. It, it's it's tough hunting. Okay, it's 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 tough. So go back. So I think at some point in there, you and I talked about. About the hunt, about going someplace and filming a hunt and and taking your dogs and seeing if they could catch bobcats and and that was seven or eight years ago and we're finally getting around yeah. to it and, it's, and uh, so and then in comes Derek and Derek has a camp up in southeast uh, Oklahoma and and you met Derek through that through that uh, exchange with everybody. that's the first time I'd heard of him but I can't remember how we actually met because we. Just started hunting together about a year ago, yeah. here, and, here and there hunting so, together. And you started going down to South Texas and hunting with right. Cody some. Yeah, okay. and see all that all that whole conversation and debate was real interesting to me because I've only been hunting in this area for about eight years. 
Yeah. And so when I hear somebody like, you know, somebody that's been hunting as long as, as Harold Barker, I listen to sure. what they say. Yeah. And, uh, and anybody else that's been hunting that long. And then you start trying to figure it out for yourself because you are in a little different country. But obviously that, I listened to that and thought, well, let, I wonder if there's anything to this. Going back uh, beyond that, before Cody came up, after hunting here for about eight years, I said, Cody, I, most every dog I have is South Texas bred. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't think. I think it's going to work, or I wouldn't have a pack of South Texas bred yeah, exactly. dogs. I think exactly. it's going to be fine. But, but we didn't know until until we knew. You bring dogs that hunted there their whole lives and bring them up here and see. Yeah. So, and then, like I said, finally that one thing we talked. Cody and I have talked about it and everything. So, finally, we both the the stars aligned, and and Derek was going to be up here and, and told us we could stay at his place here and. And uh, he was our guide. He said, I can show you where there's some cats. And he had some tied up for us. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, and it, it, it's, it's real funny, too, because I've been talking to Derek on the phone for a long time. And, you know, one thing that's for certain is there's not near as many cats here as there is in South Texas. But. And Derek's been saying, oh, you know, well, you got to have a different kind of dog because you might rode all weekend just to start one cat. And, and then, you know, as luck would have it, we pull up, turn them loose, drive 15 minutes, start a bobcat, and, you know. Yeah. But that's, been, that's good guide work. Been in Oklahoma two hours and got a bobcat on the tailgate, you know. We can't we can't forget to tip our guide before we leave. <laughs> i got to take whatever credit I can get. Yeah. You, know, this thing. you bet. And that and, was. Uh, and, and. You had some dogs in this hunt too. Absolutely. So, so it was a combination of dogs, and and uh, there was a lot of dogs. <laughs> there were there were plenty of dogs. <laughs> plenty of dogs. We and needed it, a couple more. So Cody drives eleven hours on Thursday, yep. and I drive twelve hours, twelve and a half hours between Thursday and Friday. And our we went out Friday afternoon, Friday evening, at about. What five thirty something like that in the evening? Well, backing up the night before that, I drove five hours up here, and there's a storm oh, of tornadoes and yeah. hail coming in. So I'm watching the radar, trying to stay ahead of the storm and get here before it hits. And I start seeing a, a cell that's headed this way. That had on new, on the radio, it reported three and a half inch hail. Jeez. Well, that's terrible. <laughs> that's bad. Yeah. And. Uh, so I get up here not knowing if y'all are going to be able to make it, especially him because he's coming up through the storm. And um, there's not much reception here, but I can get a little bit on the weather on the phone. And I was watching, there's a there's a Facebook page for county weather right here for this county. And the guy was on there live, and he said, he said we have a tornado warning, and if you're in this line, take cover immediately and he started moving his cursor on that screen and he put that arrow right on top of my head I thought, and i stepped outside and it was just as still as it could oh. be and i thought this isn't a good place to be and uh especially in this camp house and i so i thought well i'm gonna it looks like it's if i just go south down here to this other town i can miss it i got down there the other town and tornado sirens are going off <laughs> I hunkered down under a uh, building there and, and waited it out. But yeah. I don't think we had any tornadoes here. But, but there was a warning, though. It, there was circulation. Still got, what, probably three inches of rain right here? It rained good. It, the wind did get up real high, and I was without power. When I got back to camp, I was without power till the next day. Yeah. Um, but they got it all back. This whole area was out without power. There were some yeah. trees down and yeah. stuff. One of the reasons Lines I stopped, stopped where I did, I was on the phone with my brother-in-law, and he said, where are you going? I told him where I was going, and he said, man, he said, he said, let me get on the Internet. And he looked, and he said, there are some terrible storms in there. So we had done I that. I wasn't in a hurry. I got me a motel room, just stayed. And it back at home, which I live 270 miles from here, basically, and um, that some of those same storms went through there, and, and my wife was sending me pictures the next day. It didn't hurt. It just tore some trees down at our house, but it destroyed uh, our neighbor's house. It ripped the roof off, and it pretty much destroyed their shop. They had a pretty wow. nice shop there. It just uh, 
we had done that live, Brett, mm-hmm. talking about coming up here, and then I posted on Facebook, you know, headed to the to the hunt, and I had people messaging me and calling me and people that I didn't even know, mm-hmm. there, you know, on on Facebook message saying, "Hey, man, be careful, you know, there's storms. Storm. It's it's pretty bad." But so anyway, we get here. And in my mind, I, I mean, with that much storms, you know, being where I'm from, it, it, that that doesn't help conditions for like three or four days. But here, because of all the foliage and everything, that much moisture probably helped. It made it ideal conditions. A bobcat hound doubles in value when he has mud between his toes. <laughs> okay. Well, it worked out good, I think, because from hunting up here so long, and when it rains, when the rain comes in like that, Everything lays up, and if you go out right after the rain, I've never had any luck. I'll go out and look and see, if, try to find some mud, see if anything's moving, anything, cow, deer, anything. And um, which Cody and I did when he got here. We just we weren't going to hunt yet, but we were just let's go drive. I said let's I'll show you some of the country. Let's drive around and look, and there wasn't a track anywhere. Yeah. And um, but by the time it was time for us to hunt, it was about the time things just start moving around again and uh i think that that helped a good a good bit finding one yeah they were moving well and and i think it also helped with learning what i've learned on this hunt i think it also helped wipe out a lot of all of the old trails and uh okay yeah well let's get into that so when we first get here and you dump the dogs, we're roading them and, and free casting them down. One of these old, these are logging roads, aren't they? They're yeah. logging roads. Yeah. And uh, sorry about the wind. There's yeah. quite a few roads here because of that. Yeah. Because and, they, of and, it, and this is, what do you call it, cut over country? What do you, what do you call it? Where they Cut over. They, mm-hmm. they, 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 I mean, when you can see in the aerial shots, they cut it, they, they cut out all the timber, and then they replant it, and it grows back. And, it and they cut seconds. blocks. Yeah. So you'll hit a block that's clear cut, and it's just nothing but mud and whatever, limbs and stumps and stuff. And yeah. then you'll hit a block that's bigger timber with not much undergrowth. And then go a little further, and there's a clear line where maybe five-year growth or something with a lot more undergrowth, undergrowth there where it's pretty thick. And, and you can see from the aerial, you can see that how... It's, I mean, it's just like row crops, you know, the, those trees are planted in rows. And, and I've started a lot of cats at that transition line before, where it's from big timber to thicker. And it's like maybe, I wonder if when they're traveling, they hit that little bigger timber where it's a little easier to travel if they're going somewhere or maybe yeah. hunting the edge of it or whatever they're doing. I bet. So anyway, we first place, we're going down through there. It's evening. Sun's just going down. And... Uh, Cody's dogs, we see them start whipping their tail, wiggling. I was checking to see when the major uh, on the salooner tables is going to be there. can be pretty accurate. According to the salooner tables, it's the worst day of the month, which is my luck. Uh, but the major time is 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. And then tomorrow morning, it's a little bit better day. And the major will be uh, 9.30 in the morning to 11.30 in the morning. So You put a lot of faith in that? that. Uh, you know, R- Ruben used to get mad at me when I would bring it up. And he'd say, well, screw it, Cody. Let's just not go hunting then. <laughs> I'd say, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, let's go, you know. But, uh, um, but there's something to it. I mean, it ain't always right. But it's enough, you know, if I've been hunting a long time and I'm not doing too good, but the major's coming up, I'll, I'll definitely keep hunting because uh, I don't, you know, and all the, all it means is, soon one opens up and they all hearken over there to it and they open up and a coyote starts barking yeah a coyote starts barking 
not very far from us. I ain't been hunting 10 minutes, and Brett's already accusing me of running a coyote. Trashy guys. dog. Trashy, trashy dog. dog. And I'm sitting there thinking, uh-huh, <clears throat> these South Texas broke bobcat dogs aren't broke off of Oklahoma coyote. <laughs> and uh, so, I'm, you know, I'm just there to, to document things, so I don't tell him I'd shock my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but we start working that cat. I just happen to have the camera running. Yeah. A little bit of being Malibu right there. We're in a new country. Yeah. And it's cold. They're fresh. It's wet. I need to see if we can find the crap. Is that taco? What? Do what? Oh. Now why are you doing that? Seeing which way the wind's blowing. These cats a lot of times they'll go with the wind. in lion hunting, you'll be wah, 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 wah. and then they're quiet for a while and then the jump. Yeah. Happens a lot. Like right now. May have hit a road. Uh, I wanted to might have to, might have to cheat and look at the garment. Yeah. Oh, they're not too far from where they were. What does it mean, Cody? Don't know. It's, 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 Make it up. Make it's, up a story. It's, 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 it's weird. It sounds different with because these trees. The trees. Yeah. That's one thing I want to see is I want to see how far they are. And the one of his jackets freezes, <laughs> man. <laughs> huh? Well, I thought they go across the road. Pull around over there. This 
getting close. They're only 200 yards. They sound like they're trees, half a mile yeah, away. Yeah, and these trees kind of muffle it, though. Now, normally, I don't like to move like this and down coming. home and, until I know they're right, because they may be going backwards. And remember I told you when it got quiet, it sounded like they hit a road? Yeah. That's exactly what they did. I didn't know the road was here. But. but something something bad has happened. It what was amazing to me, and, and and I hunt and I have hounds, what was amazing to me is to listen and to how you with as many dogs as you got on the ground how you can interpret what they're doing from a distance. Not Now, not just by looking at the uh, control center, <laughs> <laughs> but by just listening to them. You can tell when they're jumped, uh, you know, what dog's doing what, which one. And you say, like, when Eve, you say, when Eve, you know, yeah. when, when Eve opens up, you know, and, and uh, that you're, you're, you're going to get it jumped right then. Yeah, and... Uh, it, it, you're a hunter, so you understand. But people that aren't hound hunters, they don't even know how you tell the different dogs apart, much less listen to them and know which dog's which, you know. These are running walkers. I can't look at them and tell them yeah. apart. And, uh, but, you know, a, a houndsman yeah, knows right. his dogs exactly. and, his, and his barks. And But that cat, had, one thing that's very special about this area and I don't know if it's, I don't know why. I don't know if it's lack of sunshine in the taller timber and the cats just want some sun. I don't know if it's because of that vine with the saws on it so thick. But for some reason, the cats use the roads here much more than they do in South Texas. And a road is a problem for a cat trail anywhere you are. Yeah. South Texas, Oklahoma, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but the cats use the roads more here, so you have more problems with roads. And you hear people say that, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah so, I agree with that. I think that I've, I've seen that multiple times. Uh, starting to, where I think I'm starting the same cat might start it here, rig it back here, and not be able to move it, and try to pick where you think he went and keep going, take on it again. Where you might think it's different cats, but I don't think there's enough cats here to assume that. I yeah. think it's the same cat. He's walked this road for miles sometimes. He'd come out of and, and hit that road. And they and just can't the smell him there. And then you've got to figure out and where there's did no he go. cattle. Yeah. There's no cattle. In South Texas, there's cattle. Yeah. And anywhere you have cattle, you have cow trails. Yeah, exactly. And so it provides a pathway for the game to travel on. Well, you don't have that here. Yeah. Uh, there is no trails. You saw this stuff. I mean, there's a deer trail here and there, but so they're gonna they're gonna travel they, the they path use the road. Well, and the deer are not in that thicker. Yeah. Typically, I mean, they'll be anywhere, but where I see a lot of deer is in the more open stuff like this, which this is more open because it's never been cut. This because it's private. Still got some hardwood. And yeah. In here. Yeah. And the only place there's hard hardwood out there is in the creek bottoms and stuff. Yeah. Really. But that cat, had, it was a hunting trail, you know. He had meandered around in circles, and them dogs trailed and trailed and and trailed. And, and I thought they had maybe gone backwards, and well, ended up they didn't. And we crossed a road, and, and we had to, I mean, we you everybody was out trying to figure out where the cat had gone. The dogs were a little confused at the road. And uh, I remember oh, Derek came over there, and, and he said, Derek said, I think we're backwards on this. And I asked him, I said, why do you think we're backwards? Cause he, and he pointed at a dog. He said, because I know that dog. Yeah. And that dog was checking the backside. I mean, yeah. he, that dog was going around there to check. And she was right. Well, I had the camera up. Well, we'll know. I thought I'd just seen something go across the road right there. Really? It was black, though. Or dark. Black pen.
at that point we were backwards, and 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 what had happened is, uh, and it was Peaches was was the dog, but uh, get out of there, Sam, get out of there, Sam. Got to be a male dog. Yeah. <laughs> but the cat had crossed the road, and then went through some timber, then crossed the road again. And then came back across the first road, but didn't cross the second road. You know, it, it was it was it was funny. That cat man made that track at noon when that sun came out too. Yeah, but uh, they finally. You know, they trailed on. We trailed on it about an hour, um, and then Eve started singing. And when Eve talked, and yeah, thing. when Eve barks, the race is. But on. it did look backwards. But uh, looking back now, I think that cat we weren't we weren't that close to it yet. And that cat had probably fed across there, or traveled across there, and then traveled out into that brush, and then turned and came back. Yeah. And when Peaches came back down, basically the, the same trail, she was right, but it looked like she was turning it around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've seen it. That's Cody's dog, but I've seen her do that a lot of, no more than I've hunted with him. I've seen her do that several times. Turning the, you know, they start a cat, leave the road with it this way, and then Peaches come back. And I didn't start it on peaches. the other side. You know, I didn't. Rubens, one of Rubens dogs? No, no. It, uh, that was a bought dog. Yeah. Uh, that was the insurance dog when I got my oh. dog killed. Yeah, Mr. Brown's dog. Yeah, well, and he got it from Robbie. When Robbie quit hunting, Robbie sold peaches and Clinto bought her. Okay. And then uh, when my dog got poisoned and the insurance company said, we'll replace your dog, uh, you know, I I said, look, there's a dog. Y'all figure it out. And they, you know, they paid Settled for with it. Him. She's a really good dog. Uh, there's no doubt about it. She's a good dog. But about that going backwards, and it pops into my head pretty quick when we start one, of maybe it's backwards because... Of what I've seen up here, the roads are wet now. I mean, it's just rained, and they still had trouble on the road. Yeah, when oh, it's yeah. dry. So if that cat traveled that road, and you missed where he came on, you came in at an intersection or something, and they, I've seen them where they're pecking around. You can tell they're smelling something, but they're not starting it. I mean, it's, they can't smell it, and they finally find a place that leaves the road. Well, if they're backwards at that point, that's where he came to the road. Where he left the road, there's no telling where it's at. Yeah. So that's the only thing they can smell. My dogs. I, this is what I've seen with my dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so that cat ended up catching him, catching her. <coughs> it caught it down right on the one of those edge lines, right. Yeah, on the edge of a creek. On the edge. Or a big old draw, I call them. Creeks, yeah. Not a creek. But. And uh, everybody was a little excited because we, we hadn't been here for, we hadn't put the dogs down for an hour. Yeah. I mean, and, and started a cat and then got him caught. This is a very important time right now. Wait, what's going on? Eve. They're not Eve again. So when Eve starts opening like that, yeah, they're about to get her yeah, jump. It's fixing to go. You know, they, they squirted that cat there and they got under him pretty good and he got out on them and they need to they need to pick it up. Who's screaming right there? Loud. He's loud, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> that was Chamoy right there. There you go. That's my dog. She's got a little blue tick in her. She'll just pull up a tree somewhere, won't she? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
dogs got the cat. The mother dogs had swung to the left. These dogs swung to the right. They hit the cat. Now the other dogs are <laughs> trying to catch up. Yeah. That's loud right there. <laughs> That's the last puppy Reuben Lossman raised right there. Really? Yeah. And she can run a wildcat. Got a little bit of Reuben in her. Yeah. They can all get together right now, they'll run. <laughs> right there. It sounded like they caught him. No, no, they got some ways to go still. When I told you Eve, that's, that's when Eve barks, it's it's fixing to be jumped. I mean that's her oh. Taco got thrown out. <laughs> oh poor Taco. Yeah. How old is Taco? Oh nine months, man. Oh, he's a baby. They were looking at him for a minute. He's about to freeze up, isn't he? I don't know. They say they go for hours and hours up here. Maybe they can. This is where we stored it in. And see how they came pretty much straight? Mm -hmm. Now they're running him in circles. So they're tightening it up on him? Yeah. Yeah, he's not he's not just leaving out of the country right there. He's starting to settle down a little bit. As of right now, he's been jumped and running for 40 minutes. For a cat that catches on the ground. what I like to hear. How could you tell they caught him? I can I could tell by listening the way the dog shut up and the cat was growling and and uh, you know which dogs I mean I, you could just hear it. <laughs> and they'll stay right there with that cat? Um, I mean for a little bit. See how the garments marking them all treed now? Yeah. I'm wondering if it would have been easier to go back to here, but that probably ain't clear no more, is it? Well, it's easier in that right this, here, is, is, this is a hill. Yeah. <laughs> but they're down in the bottom of it. When he started down that way, he had nowhere to go. Let's go collect our bounty. You got it pin marked, Derek? Puppies, man, that's a, that's a <laughs> Hey, Brett. Yes, sir. I don't know if you know it or not, but I've got a big ass 
grin on my face right now. <laughs> you know, to come 12 hours, 800 something miles into new country. Although if we get down here and there's a coyote laying dead on the ground, I'm gonna be very, uh, turn my frown upside down. I'm saying it's about a 40 pound bear. <laughs> 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 if it's a coon, it was Derek's dog, goddammit. You're right there, Brent. There's some stickies. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, took man. some very good dog work Woo. to get that cat jumped man they 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 really played hell just to get him jumped they worked at it didn't they it took them over an hour of trailing just to get it jumped and then it took about 45 minutes <laughs> What do we do the rest of that evening? Just came home, slap each other's. We yeah. came back because we wanted to hunt that morning, and next we morning. Everybody, yeah. how good we were. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> we wanted you know. to hunt daylight, try to get bed, yeah. so we came back and yes, went to bed. Exactly. So we come back and, get, and the next morning, get up and take off, and uh, before daylight, got up there. The sun's just coming up. It's beautiful. Uh, Derek took took us to the high spot up there, and. Uh, Dog started a cat right there, yeah. and it, but it was in one of those clear cut areas, yeah. and 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 they I, whatever we can't we do is that the same? So, and, and I would have had a different opinion if you'd asked me immediately then, but after hunting here a couple of days, I think it was all the same cat do you? as far as they travel, and we trailed and trailed and trailed and trailed and trailed and is is uh. You know, it was enough trailing to drive Reuben Lossman crazy, let me tell you that. And off the road, back to the road, off the road, back to the road. Yeah. And then we, we had some traffic. Well, the tra tra the, logging, that's a the, big problem is is, is is the logging trucks. Yeah. You could sure you could sure lose some dogs. I but, mean. but that guy had pulled up, them two guys, and then when they yeah. left... We had yeah, dogs that, follow them. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. We so had we had to load everything up, go get the dogs that followed the, the other truck. Then we came back, and we went around, and then Hercules rigged that, that cat out of the truck. Out so of the we, box. So we dumped them loose, and uh, they went to, you know, trailing around, trailing around, but it's, it's on the road still. That cat, you know, it's still been going down that road. And then we came around crossed the creek came back up at the end of that airstrip remember yep yep, or that, yep. and then they 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 found where it left the road there yeah and well, they went to and trade. come to find out there was more than one cat yeah yes we didn't realize that is our trick trailing trying to straighten it all out but yeah. he don't tie his rig dog jump He's not a rig dog. Get him, Dolly! Get him, Dolly!
they stay in pretty tight in the same spot. Yeah, they ran into that one spot and they made it. They made a loop. He's just sneaking in front of them dogs. He's just trotting around right in front of them. They're looking at him. They got him. Hear him? But it's big old Tom. It's a battle, boys. Okay. I can hear him growling. Yeah. God, gum, this is nasty stuff. Start that up. We started it. Got there know, at that I'm airstrip, lost. didn't yeah, we? At the airstrip, yeah. And they trailed it along through here, traveled along through here. And then they came up here, and there's a little old road, and 
they went down that road a couple hundred yards and kind of picked up some ground on him. And they went to trailing and went to trailing. And them dogs kind of split. And Peaches and Loud and Dolly and Tina and Reba were all to the left. And then a bunch of them dogs were to the right. And when me and you were walking down there, when I started pointing at the brush, Stocky had jumped that cat. I mean, Stocky was looking at him. Mm -hmm. And the race was on. And then, you know, one by one, dogs started pouring to him. And they ran him all the way back down here. I thought he was going to cross the road. But I don't know if he, you know, he may have. I thought I heard him here a couple I of times. I thought I did, too. Yeah. And, you know, he may have seen us and kind of turned back. And a lot of times when they're running them cats and you turn them back, you turn them back into the dogs. Into the dogs. That's, that's pretty much it. But he was just trotting, I mean, just slipping around right here in front of them. And then, what do you think the chances are there was two cats back over there? I would say 100%. Because those yeah. two dogs, they, they were on something back yeah. in there. And they, no, they were, they were going. But uh, Cool. Number two Oklahoma cat. So I'm excited about that. So what do you think about the conditions here? Conditions are perfect right now. I mean, they can really trail. Uh, they're trailing a little slower than they would at home, and they're being a, they're barking more than they would at home. And I don't know if I just sense that much better. You also have to remember we had a bunch of rain yesterday, so that makes it about as perfect as perfect. And those cats get. are moving. Yeah, and this stuff's thick enough that the cats can't get through it without rubbing on something. Mm -hmm. So they're not just trailing the track. You know, the cats are rubbing up against them vines just yeah, like then, we are. Yeah. And uh, all this grass, and it's it's green. It's it's. Uh, I would say that today, as far as conditions are go, today's probably the best day of the year to hunt in this particular location. Anyway. What about our guide? How how long had you had this one tied up for us? <laughs> well, you see how little he got. He hadn't eaten in a week. <laughs> Wait, on y'all get here. <laughs> he shrunk. <laughs> Hey, a cat's a cat, boys. Don't be talking about the size now. Size right there close to the end, right before we caught it, it split, and Stocky, Stocky jumped that Stocky cat. And then, yeah. And that was, you said Stocky's, Stocky's got him jumped. He said yeah. Stocky's looking at him. Yeah. Stocky's got him jumped. And then it, it was short work did after you get, that. Did you get that on film? I didn't get the Stocky on no. film, but I got everything else. And then we ended up, and let me tell you what, this country, I can see where over a period of time, the dogs would, as you said, slow down. Yeah. They got a vine. What do you call that vine up here? I don't know. Sawbriar. Sawbriar. Is what I've always heard it called. And I tell you what, it grabs a hold of you and it don't let go. Yeah. And you and you can see the dogs. Do we have any here? Taco's got it pretty good. It, it, I don't it know cuts them in their armpits, is what I would call. It, it gets it, in there. It, it rubs them raw. Yeah. You know. And it, it's and they caught that cat down that I don't know probably what. 100 yards down that hill, something like it wasn't very far. But that cat was a good example of them using the roads. After that truck passed, that pickup that those two guys were in, they stopped and talked oh, yeah, to us, yep, and then yep. we gathered dogs back up. We started rigging around. We were rigging the direction we thought the cat was headed. Mm -hmm. And that road goes down, and another one comes off and comes back up this way. And when we got to this road coming this way, they rigged twice, but couldn't do anything when they got on the ground. And we, when they got over here to this intersection, they rigged, but there were trucks coming. And we were, right. didn't want to get on that road too bad. So we started started back north, and they hit it right there. So we're all around that block of woods. Yeah, it's all, the, it's all. It's all. And that's they one thing that I've seen. Road. I'm glad you're explaining that because I've been lost since the day I got it. <laughs> well, that's what I think was happening. I think they walked that whole road, and we finally got up close enough to them. I, I never even could see the road because I'm sitting in the back seat, and I have to look through mission control. And it's hard to. <laughs> I'm going to get you one of them screens to mount on the the, the horn of your saddle when you're riding. I, so we got to give these guys a hard time about their 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 screen time. Well, we're, I know we're going to get fits about the mission control, the, the control center, but it's you can't. No, no, you I, can't keep up with the dogs. No, not in your truck. You couldn't ride a mule through this. Country. And it's so I took y'all to the less rough part of this country 
No, now I'm gonna. No, I took no, him no, to no. the easy part. God, dick. No, because <laughs> you can't catch one in that. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just but because with you. you can't hear very well. Yeah. And I thought with the videos mm-hmm. and everything, you, yeah. the dolls drop off, and it, it's the same kind of stuff. But it's you, you know, don't get you can't hear as well. One thing that's really important about that. Mission Control 2 is them logging trucks. You need to know when them dogs are on the road, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, and, no, uh, no. I'm just, I, I it was, it, if anybody's ever seen the way I hunt, I mean. It's just, as old school as it gets. I mean, it, it's just, that. it's cool. I, I enjoyed that. That thing you got on, you know, your screen. What do you call that? What was that thing you watched? The Garmin Tread. That's, man, that thing's like a big screen TV. I don't watch movies on anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty cool because you can, and, and, and I've always, and, and don't get me wrong, I have a buggy and I have a, 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 one of those little Garmin things and I watch it. But I'm not, you, I, I was amazed at how accurate you guys are at seeing just where things are going and what's going. So then, this is jumping way ahead. Like, so... Is there anything left from that night, from that day, the next day? No, we caught one the first evening. We caught one the next morning. And then we made three hunts, and one of them came up empty, which was last night. We trailed that yeah, cat a did. long way. So, we, yeah, we, we trailed a couple cats to quite long a ways. Yeah, yeah. We trailed well, another one that morning. One. Yeah. I mean, the, the, no, we're, those we, are two different times. We though. only hit one trail... Uh, that was, you know, let me say that the last trail that we hit last night, the one that lasted for hours and hours and hours, you know, that was the only trail that was catchable. But even then, so one thing that happened that was really cool and it was eye opening for me was in South Texas, because of the dissenting conditions are so much worse. I would have, and it has nothing to do with the running of the cats being harder, but I'm just talking about scent conditions. Yeah. I would have told you that cat's trotting in front of them dogs. That cat's trotting in front of them dogs. We trailed that cat probably in a two and a half, three mile circle. And when it was all said and done, and then we find out, no, he wasn't trotting in front of the dogs. We trailed him to a deer kill. That's, that's. And so it was eye-opening to me, and then when one of the other cats we were trailing, I thought, man, that cat's trotting in front of them dogs. They're just trailing him, and they can't get him jumped. And then I found his tracks, and his tracks were, I mean, hours old, hours, hours old. Yeah. And we went, at, we were trailing that cat for a few, couple of hours. I don't remember how far. Get, they're getting all blurry to me yeah, now, mixed is. together. But a long ways, thinking, well, we'll catch up catch up and then it'd sound good for a minute yes. and then they'd make a lose and they weren't really making a it's really not a lose they're still they're just trailing yeah and that's that's my world yeah mm. they're trailing much older trails than i would have expected them to here because of the conditions i yeah. mean the, the way it's 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 covered and and there's a lot of foliage yeah so conditions are perfect yeah absolutely perfect talk about what you said about the barking yeah, your dogs sounded different here. What the, or the acted different? My dogs uh, in this country trailed more and barked more. And I'm just, I mean, let me rephrase that. My dogs barked more and trailed slower than they would in South Texas, and they were barking more. I don't know how much of it. Is just because the scent, they can smell so much better. It smells good to them. It gets them excited. Part of it, I think, is them vines restrict their movement, and they want to go, and they want to go, and then they're, they're kind of barking out of frustration a little bit, trying to weave through that stuff. But then when they would come out, you know, when they're trailing next to the road, you know, that one cat, we just walked down the road for a long ways, kind of keeping up with them. This wind's getting worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there you go. You know, I could see my dogs, and I could see dogs that aren't good. You know, I have very good trailing dogs, but I had dogs that aren't very good trailing dogs that were 
trailing their butt off, you know. And yeah. A, a dog that would normally be moving out and moving out more was sitting there trailing. And uh, Except for Jake. Jake just sits on the sideline and waits until they got everything going, then he goes in and gets the glory. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> he'll, right. He'll sit there on the road and just watch and listen. <laughs> he's booger. He don't like. He's a he's a funny dog. He don't like strange dogs and he don't like strange people. Yeah, he'd look at me like, "What in the world are you doing?" Here? Yeah. But that was interesting to me to hear him say that about his dogs because over the years, some of the dogs I've trained here ended up pretty mouthy. And, and I think, think that's because they started here. This the only place they've ever hunted. Unless a few times I might go hunt with him, I'd go hunt with him. It's a, that dog's pretty mouthy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well. Now, now maybe you know, that's maybe that's part yeah. of the reason why. Yeah, that's a it's a consequence. I think that training. I mean, if you were to come to me tomorrow and say you're going to quit hunting, you got to start over, and you're going to do it here, much harder than it would be to do it in in South Texas. You know, I think it's it's a lot easier for someone who catches seventy, eighty, ninety cats a year in South Texas, trains up a bunch of really good dogs. And then brings them up here and catches a couple of cats versus someone who lives here trying to get started cat hunting. Trying to get started cat hunting in this country would be tough. It'd be tough. That's, so that's what, what I really wanted to see. That's yeah. what we talked about, too, is that if a guy really wanted to be successful and this is where he hunted, this is where he lived, you'd probably be better off to find you a place down in South Texas, go down and hunt down there for... Yeah, as long as you could, and then bring those dogs up here, and you could be all right. How do you, do you think the dogs will content with if they if you trained them somewhere else and got them on a bunch of cats and you brought them into this country, would they stay good dogs? Yes, uh, I think th I think that if you brought good dogs here, that the dogs would continue to get better. They'd learn how yeah. to get around in it. Yeah, I mean, they got to navigate. They got to learn. I mean, it, and it just and in the same aspect, if. If you brought a dog from here that had never been to South Texas before, I guarantee you I could take you to a place where the prickly pear is so thick, he's going to have trouble. Yeah. You know. But uh, Alan Listow, Listow from Minnesota, uh, he's a cat hunter that came down hunting with me mm -hmm. this winter. And, you know, he's kind of kind of had a comment. He said, you know, a good cat dog is going to be a good cat dog anywhere you may not be as successful everywhere. It may take acclimation, but a good dog is, is you know, a good dog can have the ability to be a good dog anywhere. He just needs to get used to his surroundings. And that's, and that's when people say South Texas dogs and Mississippi dogs and all of that. I, it's location. It's game density. I mean, and it's not, and when I say South Texas dogs, I, I mean, I, I mean South Texas dogs. They're a breed of their own. But I also mean dogs that have been hunted in South Texas that have caught 90 bobcats a year. Yeah. I'm not really talking about their breeding so much as I am their 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 like experience, you know. And uh, Yeah, how many places can you <clears throat> take a dog and, 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 and expose them to that many cats? Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. That's that's priceless right there. Yeah, I mean, you, and you you make dogs out of, you know, and but another, uh, uh, you can make dogs quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, you can break them quicker and yes. and easier. You know, oh, when you yeah. hear that coyote barking at your dog, I don't you sit there worried about yeah, that. When, when you bring a dog that's been down there and been on ninety cats, and and you bring him here and you put him on the ground, he's looking for a cat. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, yeah, right. I mean, he's not. And and. In, in that video that Harold Parker did hunting in Mississippi, uh, I think he said 35 cats a year. Mm -hmm. uh, they just don't have as many cats. No. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it's not, you know, I mean, if he lived in South Texas, he'd catch a ton of cats, too. Probably more than me. Um, but there's just not as many cats there. Yeah. And it's same thing with lions. You know, you're a lion hunter. I mean, you, to say one guy caught 20 lions and one guy caught five, that's not an honest comparison without knowing all the details. Yeah, you know where you're at and what you're... I think one of the big things out of all this, including back to the drama of how it kind of started, is that catching a bobcat anywhere is not real easy. No. No. So, but there's different types of challenges and different 
parts of the country for what makes it hard. Yeah. And it's hard to say that that means this place is harder or this place is harder. None of it's very easy, but the challenges are a little different. A little different. It's and, and it might take different. a little, little different kind of dog. It's different, different but it's still. Yeah, it's not better. In this country, if I was, from what little I know, and I'd like to hunt it when conditions aren't so good, so I can make an honest opinion. But if I lived here, I would have me a bunch of registered running dogs with hot nose, hot nose with less trailing ability than my dogs now. And I think that's what a lot of them guys have, you know. I, I, a lot of them eastern Mississippi hunters, you know, I think Mr. Harold Parker had registered train, I mean, uh, running walkers, you know. And I, they're just a little different. I tell you what, uh, one thing I was disappointed in is, I mean, there's tall timber here. And for the life of me. I can't understand why a bobcat won't climb a tree in this country. Yeah. And 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 I really wanted to see if a lot of people you talk to when you talk about running walkers and South Texas running walkers and you tree them in those smaller trees is they'll say, well, you know, there's a difference between a dog that'll tree and a dog that'll locate. Yeah. And uh, I was anxious to see if we could get a bobcat that climb one of these big tall pine trees and, and hide in it and see if these dogs would locate. Yeah, and we didn't get that opportunity. So where are we going next? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I don't know. Let me make some smart ass comment on YouTube somewhere, and if I can piss somebody off enough, we'll we'll load the camera up. And so go. about what you just said about them treeing or not treeing here. Yeah. Uh, I treed one. Yeah. I didn't have dogs that would locate it. Yeah. Um, but that was just the Did dogs. Did you locate it? I located it. Yeah. And. Um, but really the only reason I – I don't know if this had a – I don't know why he treed when he did, but between trailing and we made several bad loses on that cat. Me. I, it was just me. Made several bad loses, and I just let them – I just let them work. And they'd pick it back up. Sure. Times that I'd think there's no way they're going to pick – they'd pick it it took four hours. Oh wow! Really? It took four hours, and the, but he he did finally tree. And when they they were just milling for so long, you got in there and looked up and you seen the tree. Well, it was just lucky. Um, where I was driving toward them on the, I could tell they'd lost it, and I thought, time to go home. Yeah, there's no way we're going <laughs> to catch this cat. And um, I was driving around to them. Well, I was up on top of this hill. And it was clear cut, or basically it was just grass, uh, down to the bottom of that creek. But there were big trees down the bottom of that creek. And when I came around the corner on that hill, my headlights hit his eyes in the uh -oh. top of that tree. That's the only reason I found him, because I didn't think they, I never crossed my mind his tree. I thought he was just gone. I So, and just to give you an idea, here, in this trip, I haven't, we haven't walked through any trees any bigger than anything that I've treed cats in, in certain places in South Texas. Here we go. But there's also not any big trees here. I mean, they're big trees, but not like a continental divide pine tree where the lion's 150 foot in the air yeah, all of the that. all of the trees i mean we're sitting here now there's some big trees but we weren't hunting in these big trees i mean a, a lot of the pine trees weren't weren't that 20 yeah. foot tall but we you went know. through some we went through some these pine trees that yeah are, i mean there's some in certain places feet tall. i just yeah. mean when we were walking around it remember when we me and you walked in the brush yesterday yeah, yeah there's some big trees in there yeah there was some and that's why we walked down there because yeah. I thought, in my mind, there's my my seeing if a running walker tree and these dogs that had a bad lose and they're trying to work that out. And I'm sitting here thinking in my head, I think no, that that bobcat's probably just climbed a tree and they can't find it. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't have him jump. Well, but that doesn't mean. It, it, yeah, no, and it, it doesn't. He, he he could, but that that don't happen very often with bobcat hunting. Yeah. In, in thicker brush, anyways, yeah. you know. Um, 
if they get far enough ahead of the dogs on a jump and they climb a tree. Or like they say a lion does. A lion, you know, you might get a lion jumped or going and he and he run and he's that far ahead of the dogs and he run from here to there and he says, Oh, I should have climbed that tree and he goes back and climbs the tree. Well, those dogs run out to the end of that track and yeah. they have a hard time looking. Yeah. So that's what I mean, yeah. maybe bobcats, maybe bob. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe bobcats in certain areas learn to use tricks like that, or not tricks, but it's just an instinct. To, it's, it's, it's not like they're trying to throw the dogs off, but they're think they're for whatever well, reason. Bobcats have, you know, they could be some tricky fools. Oh yeah, you know, but I they think come it's, up it's, with all I kinds of stuff. I don't think it's a uh, a thought. Process. It's not intentional. Yeah, yeah, it's just an instinct. Yeah. and and you know. Why a bobcat wouldn't do the same, use the same trick, you know, how they squat and everything, and they'll squat and the dogs overrun them or whatever, and they're hiding yeah. and then come back and climb a tree. And then you've got to have a dog that'll locate. But like these trees here, this is, we, so down where I live, and it, if you're hunting in the brush country, but I hunt a lot of drain ditches and stuff that have hackberry trees on them, and they get about as big as that tree, but they have leaves on them, you know, which may, right now it wouldn't. It'd be easier yeah. now because they'd be able to see the cat. Sure. But, you know, you see some of those videos uh, of lions and stuff up north. I mean, they're... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know that... I don't... You know, I don't know that my dogs would locate and stuff like That's that. That's what I want to... That's our next deal. We're gonna, Within the next eight years... <laughs> you want to test their tree I want to go somewhere huh? where bobcats tree and... Uh, go, we go do it in the snow. Yeah, but that brings on a whole new set of... I have to bring a bigger jacket. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll bring you an extra jacket. I had to bring you one this They've time. been making fun of me for being cold for the last two days. Well, what what was the temperature when you left your house? 102 when I left my house, and there was ice on the ground one morning. Brett tells me it's not cold, and he tells me those aren't mountains, and that's how your friends treat you. It's not. It isn't, it isn't cold, and these are hills. <laughs> these are not <laughs> the, Cody, talk about the after the the jump. Differences are the same after the cat's jumped, or length of how it ran. You know anything? We ran there. one cat jump to caught forty minutes exactly. We ran another cat caught. I mean, jump to caught, I, I don't know, I didn't time it, and it wasn't long enough that I wanted to look back. But it also, there were circumstances that made it different. Uh, Ten minutes, maybe. Twelve minutes. I, you know, in South Texas, I've had, I can count, I can probably count on my left hand the number of cat races that I've had over an hour. But, 45 minute race I mean if you go hunting and you have a 45 minute race oh man that was a good running cat you know that was good oh man that was great um, but we have them so we had one here are they all like that the next one was it doesn't really count but it was shorter but in my experience I think on average if you were to if you were to hunt here for a year and tally up the cat races and then hunt in South Texas for a year and tally up the cat races. I think the races would be longer here than they would in South Texas. There's no doubt about that. Really? Yeah. But I will say this. Two things. Number one, uh, 40 minutes. That was a little female, hard-running cat. That's a long race. Mm -hmm. you know. And you hear a lot of guys talk about three-hour, four-hour races. And I'll, I will continue to say this till the day I die, even if it causes trouble. If my dogs had to run four hours, they'd fall over dead from trying so hard. They couldn't do it, you know. Uh, well, you're, it, you're talking about the difference between trailing and interrupting. Yeah, race, now, or jumped race. I'm talking about jumped race, yeah, exactly. running. Yeah. Now, with that said, a lot of people, including myself, have listened, you know. Some of the stuff that I heard hunting here, I was like, man, they they got a jump, man. They, got, they didn't have a jump; they were trailers, they were trailers. Yeah, you know. But they were getting so much scent, they, they yeah, were, they were using more mouth. And, so and, and, I and, could see where people would say, man, we ran that cat for three hours. 
Well, you didn't really run it for three hours. You trailed it and ran it for three hours, but it all sounded so good. And know? that's what it was, the the one I said that treed in four hours. It wasn't four hours of no, running the trained, cat. Yeah. It was from start, from the first bark to the tree so, yeah. was four hours. And it covered, they trailed it a long way. It, you know, it was a long What's the chance deal. of trailing a uh, bobcat down in South Texas for four hours? Trailing. Trailing? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've, we've done it. Me and Derek trailed one the other day two miles, two and a half miles, yeah. But it's it's rare. Um, and it, it's just, man, it, it's just different, you know, and mm -hmm. the conditions are so much. I mean, down where me and Derek were hunting, where we trailed that cat two miles, now you go like this, and we'd all have to move dust. because there'd be, just be dust in the air. You turn the dogs loose, and you can't see them running down the road because they're kicking up so much dust. And it's a lot of the country is easier country, but it's harder conditions. So what I say is hard and what someone who lives here would say is hard, it's just two different things. It's just two different things. I, okay, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to go down to South Texas, and I think that would be a good reference to go down there and hunt with you. And see what it does. And, and film that and us do this and, and have a conversation about it. And, yeah, you could and, do that. You could hop on a plane. I need a plane ticket. Whoever owns Southwest Airlines, <laughs> send me a ticket. But yeah. Cody and I talked about the dogs that when they start here they're starting tracks that they're a lot further behind mm -hmm. hours old that they would hours. never have even known was there where yeah. he lives yeah yeah 100 percent. then that's why they're trailing so long yeah. and then what he talked about more barking on the trailing it might to somebody sound like a race and it's really not they're trailing. trailing yeah. the There's cat, more barking, and they're still just the cat. Don't even know we're there yet. Yeah. The cat that we trailed to the deer kill. Yeah, that was a long. You time. heard when they were trailing it, they sounded good. Mm -hmm. If we were in, if we were in South Texas, we never would have known that cat was existed. We never would have got a wiggle. Nothing. Nothing. Never and would, how never would have started it when they rigged that cat? They got down, and there were no barks on the ground. And then four dogs went right at a mile and a quarter up the road pretty fast, but they weren't barking. But they were smelling something or they wouldn't have made a turn, went on. It was a, it was a mile and a quarter and then left the road where well, we're thinking they should be jumped or pretty close. They were nowhere near. That's when they went up, down this road, trailed back down. That was probably a two-mile loop. Yeah. And it ended down there at that dead deer. Yeah. So and and that cat was never jumped or probably never even close to jump. Never even knew we went that far. There. No. And we found tracks. Mm -hmm. I found yeah. some tracks. So it, we weren't backwards, you know. And and I have to apologize. The cameraman's not used to hunting all night long. And I most of that hunt. I spent sleeping in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> not much of that's on video. That I slept during the hunt. And did a video, but on the way back to camp, I stayed awake because of how fast Derek was driving. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, this guy's going to run and fall asleep, and we're going to end up in a creek somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I think I'm going to... Uh, got to have faith in the guide, Brett. I had all the faith <laughs> in the world in the guide finding cats. I was getting us home safely that I was worried about. <laughs> we, uh, but we had a good hunt. We hunted. It was good. It was a lot. We hunted... Two evenings and one morning, and we caught two bobcats. So, mm -hmm. if I, I mean, and I said this the other night, and, and I thought if I, if I lived in an area like this and I was going to hunt my hounds, and 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 try to catch bobcats, I think I would do my best to develop some really good rig dogs. Yeah. And I think I would I would rig because I seen it happen. I seen it. I seen we, we, we dogs rig several cats that we couldn't turn out mm -hmm. on. And yeah, Dolly rigged a couple that was yeah. on the private land. Hercules rigged a couple that we... And I think it can be done, and, and you could, you know, cover a little more country, get on more cats, and, and maybe be a little more selective about where you put down it. And I do that a lot, and that's why when I put Hercules up, I throw that pup up there, too. So she can learn. Yeah, start to 
if, if nothing else, learn to ride up there and learn what we're doing. See, monkey do, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and I think that's that would the, be a fun the, way to hunt in here. The the that first cat that Dolly rigged, mm-hmm. that was a that was. I mean, we'd have dumped it there. We'd have had a race. Yeah, yeah, that was smoking hard. Yeah, that that was heartbreaking. Yeah, yep. that fence was right there, and it was private on yeah. that other side. Yeah. Well, cool, guys. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. I'm going to talk to. First, I'm going to talk to Van Johnson, and then go talk to Hootie Shaw. Yeah, I'm really interested to hear both of those. And and Hootie used to hunt here. Yeah. When I first started hunting here, I was hunting with Hootie, and uh, ask him what what he think what his experiences are coming from Southwest Oklahoma to Southeast. A very different country, completely different. Yes. And uh, his country gets real dry where he lives. Real dry a lot of times. That's why he moved out here. That's what I heard. For they a had a real bad drought. The lakes went dry. It, it got real bad out there. And that's that's when he started trying to find somewhere to hunt and that they could smell a cat. And uh, he started hunting out here. Yeah. Before I did. That's when yeah. I started coming up. I'm anxious. With him. I'm, I'm anxious. To, and he's a second. He's Hootie's 81 or two years old, mm-hmm. and he's a second generation houndsman. That's, yeah. That's, that's that's cat, a lot. In cat, only. cat only. Cat only. Yeah. I heard a lot about him. I'm anxious to go talk to him. And then, of course, Van Johnson. I've always wanted. I've talked to Van Johnson over the years. I've never sat down and recorded him. But and I'm 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 not sure I can do that. I I still have to contact him and make sure everything lines up. So. And Hootie's one of those guys that's never been on the internet. Never been. On, he's never. Don't even there's know a lot of people. Is. Yeah, you know, what he's done is not posted. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, that's should that, have a lot to talk about. Those are the, sure the guys I like uh, to talk ask to. Ask him also when you get there about the big, biggest cat he's caught oh, okay. and the story behind that. Okay. He caught one in southwest Oklahoma that was abnormally big. Really? Yeah. Also full of. An import. It, it, it was full of beef, too, which made it heavy, but it was a big cat on top of that. Edit this out. What it weigh? My mem- my Forty-two. Really? Yeah. That's a giant cat. And I bet he's got it. He had the hide hanging on the wall. I don't know if, where it's still at, but he has a picture of it. I think I have. A, in fact, I have a picture of him holding it. I think in my in the here in the cap in the cabin. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, so cat. yeah. I think it's in there. And um, it was a big cat. But like I say, it, it was full of beef, so it made it heavier, heavy. Yeah. But it was a Big cat, yeah. regardless. Yeah. It takes a big cat to hold that much beef. Yeah. I had fun. I did, too. We'll do it again. But wherever. You tell me where. If and I leave right now, I can have my dogs turn loose in South Texas by daylight. Yeah, you better get I'm going home. All right, guys. Thanks for coming.